Welcome, I'm the Word Nerd, and this is Counting the Cost Ministries. Let's dig deeper. If you are a new Christian looking for more information on your new walk with Christ, check out our free PDF, the little booklet, A Christian's First Steps. It's linked in the description. So, let's get started. We're going to continue our book study on 1 John, and it seems like this is taking a lot longer because I want to do more videos than just 1 John, and we do one like once a month. <laughs> <laughs> and not even that. Okay, so we're going to jump into chapter 3 today, and it's going to be verses 1 through 12. So let's go. So, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So first thing, we are going to look at the definition of bestowed. So bestowed is to put to use, apply, to convey as a gift. So the gift that they're talking about is that we should be called the sons of God. Um, so bestowed is not something that he had to do, um, but he did it because he loved us. The manner of love, um, you know, love uh, makes you act. Um, it has action to it. And he sent his son for us um, so we can be reconciled with him and to be called uh, the son or daughter of God. We can be children. We are adopted into his family. Um, therefore, the world knoweth us not. Um, if you're a born-again Christian, you understand that the world has no earthly idea um, what it really means to be a child of God. Um, they don't understand it, and they kind of look at you like you're a foreigner. Um, so, and it's because that they didn't know him. Um, so, uh, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, that it doth not yet appear that we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So he's saying, look, um, we know that we are the sons of God, um, even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes. Um, it's not appeared. Like, we're we're not in heaven. You know, we haven't inherited the earth yet. Um, but, but we know. But we know that. And when he shall appear, so this is talking um, about Jesus, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So he has a glorified body. And so we're going to be, um, have a glorified body. And we're going to understand um, the spiritual world, and I think there is a physicality to the spiritual world, because, you know, he's not just, you know, some mist floating around, he does have a body, he was resurrected physically, so there is some kind of physicality to the spiritual world, but that's another discussion, um, so we will see him, uh, when he appears again, so, uh, the second coming, all right, Verse 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So let's look at some definitions. Look, look at hope. So hope is desire accompanied by expectation of or a belief in fulfillment. Purifieth, purifieth wow, my English, um, to make pure. And pure is free from moral fault or guilt, free from what vitigates, weakens, or pollutes. So, if we have the hope that we're going to be like him and that we are the sons of God, we're going to inherit the earth, we're going to purify ourselves because it says purify himself. Um, now, when we are born again and we repent and we're saved, um, we still have to work out our salvation. Um, with fear and trembling because although we are free from sin there's temptations every time you wake up 
And so going through life and making those right decisions, um, we still have to uh, make conscious choices about what we're going to think about, what we're going to do, and things like that. And God is with us 100% of the way, but he has given us free will, and we still have to make those choices, Um, even as he is pure. So when we're born again, we're washed clean and we're innocent. And now we must choose the right to be righteous. We must choose to do righteousness. Um, so let's go to verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So let's look at some definition. Committeth is to carry into action deliberately and transgresseth. Trans, oh my gosh, transgresseth, whatever, to violate a command or law. Um, so it's just basically explaining what sin is. If you deliber- deliberately lie, you're sinning because a sin is a transgression of the law, and lying is a sin. Um, when you lie, you make a a conscious decision deliberately to do so it's not like you just bleep. like you can get to that like it's just like um out of habit especially like when maybe when you're a baby christian but you gotta work through that like i said in the beginning you gotta work through to purify yourself and to ask god to help you to get through that but um every sin um goes through your will and so and your ability to choose free will um so you got to make a choice um that's why i think that most people do things out of emotion or just out of habit and we really need to slow down and just think about consequences to an action or just think things more closely and to its conclusion all right let's go to verse five And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So, we talked about John as the author, and he lived with Jesus for three years. He walked with him, talked with him, um, you know, he laid on his um, bosom or his chest. Um, So, we know that he was close, and he can say that there is no sin in him. Um, So, he never witnessed him sin. That's, I mean, that's really important. But, uh, so he was basically, so Jesus was manifested. So let's look at that definition. Whoa. So manifested is to make evident or certain by showing or displaying. So he, Jesus came as a baby he became into his creation as a physical person um and it was to take away our sins and to save us to give us authority back of the earth i mean there's so much but he was manifested primarily to take away our sins to free us from the power of sin uh so verse six whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him so, um, I believe we've talked about abideth before, and that's why I didn't define it right here. So, abideth means to remain stable or, or in a fixed state. So, when we are abiding in Him, um, we're not going to waver. Uh, when we are focused in Jesus, we're not going to sin. Because if we're following him, you know, we're called to follow Jesus. He said, follow me. Deny yourself and follow me. Um, we're not going to sin. Because if we're, you're following someone, you're, uh, you know, you're following close behind them. You are copying what they're doing. And the Holy Spirit in Jesus is not going to lead you to sin. Like, that's not how that works. So, so I do want to talk about the ifs here. So, the is is um, a continual um, continual thing. Um, it continues um, to happen. You're doing it constantly. It doesn't 
it's not a thing. So in a Christian's life, sin should be an exception, not the rule of the life. Um, so will we sin after salvation? Most likely. Should we? No. Um, do we have the power not to in Christ? Yes. Through Christ, I can do all things. So in Christ, we should never sin, but, you know, we give in to temptation and, you know, we just get our focus off of him. And so that's what, but, you know, it's making a distinction is sin is, is a continual thing. If you're continually sinning, like every single day, you cannot lie or you cannot stop lusting or whatever the sin is, whatever it is, um, you haven't seen him. You are not saved. There is something, you know, there's something wrong. You don't even know him. Right here it says you you don't know him. Um, like when you know Jesus, you don't want to sin. You have tasted his goodness. You have tasted his sacrifice for you. And you want to do everything in your power to please him. And sin is not pleasing to him. So um, that's why it says when you abide in him, you're not going to sin. It's not going to be a daily, con continual, consistent thing. Let's go to verse 7. Little children, let not man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So let's look at deceive. The definition is to cause to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. To make someone believe something that is not true. To practice deceit. Also to give a false impression. And doeth is to perform, execute, to bring to pass, commit. And we talked about this just a second ago. That, you know, the if is a continual ongoing thing. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. So, you know, righteousness... If you're doing righteousness, after salvation, you're going to be righteous. A lot of people's like, well, you can't. You're always a sinner. No, 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 no. You're either a sinner or you're a saint. Like, there's there's no sinning saints. Like, that's not how this works. Um, is it hard? Yeah. But is it something, just because it's hard, that doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, pursue it. Um, so, don't let any man deceive you. Like... A lot of people want to deceive, like, oh, well, just because you did that, you know, no. Look, if you're, um, he that is, doeth righteousness is righteous. Um, Jesus did righteousness, as he is righteous. And look, it says, even as he is righteous. After salvation, when you do righteousness, you are righteous. Like, doing right. Like, that's, that's it. Okay, let's go to verse 8. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For he, this purpose for the Son of God, manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, it just, like right here, he that committeth sin, ongoing sin, don't care. Um, and even if you care and you're not doing anything to combat stopping you're of the devil like that's like that's what it's about being of God being a child of God your life radically changes and yes there's going to be a process but it's going to radically change and you're going to um stop sinning because God has made that heart of stone into a heart of flesh um the devil sinneth from the beginning Going back to, you know, the beginning of our physical world in Genesis. Um, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. So, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, the works of the devil is um, temptation, sin. Uh, you know, he's going to destroy all of them. So, manifest we talk about, but destroy we haven't talked about. So, destroy is to ruin the structure, organic existence, or condition of... Um, he's going to just con stop um, the power of sin that the devil has. Um, sin has power, and Jesus have, has destroyed that.
and the devil ain't happy about it. Uh, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. So let's look at remaineth. So remaineth is to be part, not destroyed, taken, or used up, to continue unchanged, to stay in the same place, or with the same person or group. So, whoever is born of God doth not commit sin. See, this is what I don't understand about people. Like, this just contradicts people's beliefs right there. Just right there. It's just... <laughs> like, how do you interpret that to say, oh, well, we're, we're always going to sin? Like, if that's your mindset, of course you're always going to sin. But I don't get up waking up in the day and be like, yep, I am going to fail God's day and there's nothing I can do about it. No. I wake up in the morning and say, God, I need you. I need you to help me to not give in to whatever temptation is going to come my way today. Because I want to serve you, and I want to please you, and I don't want to sin. And it's not like it's about rules of do's and don'ts. You know, sin separates you <clears throat> from God. And why would you do something to intentionally separate you from your creator, your Lord, your savior, the most intimate relationship that you should have, um, why would you do something intentionally to separate that? Um, every relationship has its boundaries, and sin is the boundaries that you can't cross with God to continue in a relationship with him. Like, I'm married. Um, you know, there's boundaries within our marriage that we don't do because that violates our relationship and marriage. So... Um, for his seed remaineth in him. So Jesus remains in you, and you're not going, you're not going to sin. It's not that you can't sin, it's that you choose not to sin. You cannot sin, because I cannot sin because I know that messes up my relationship with God. I cannot sin because it's not that I don't have the ability to, I choose not to sin. Um, because I am born of God, I want to uh, please him. You know, I'm um, his daughter, you know, when, you know, you have a good father, you want to uh, please him, you know, so. Verse 10, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth his brother. Um, so we talked about manifest already the definition and also doeth it's just a uh, reoccurring so that's why I highlighted it um but the children of God and the children of the devil are mes manifested in this that about committing sin it's all about that um you're not going to sin when you're of God, like, are you going to fail? Probably, yeah, every once in a while. Like I said, it should be the exception, not the rule. But you immediately repent. You repent and apologize to, if it's a person, um, you repent and apologize uh, to God and ask for the person, if it includes a person, and God's forgiveness. And you move on. But, you know, that should be an exception, not the rule of your life. Um, it says who's so like right here it says whoever doth not righteousness is not of God again like just as this goes back to it just ruins people's thoughts like well I'm just gonna sin so no big deal no sin is a huge deal it separates you from your Lord like why would you do that um, neither that loveth not his brother so a lot of people think that you can have unforgiveness towards someone and be peachy. And that's not how Jesus said, you forgive. If you don't forgive, my father's not going to forgive you either. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, I, that person did this and this to me, blah, blah, blah. Yet what did you do to God? You sinned against God. You broke his heart. And he died for you. And you still broke his heart. Like, you know, we got to think about it in those terms. I think sometimes we don't, but... <clears throat> okay, verse uh, 11. For this is the message that we've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. 
Verse 12, Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So, you know, the message that we've heard from the get beginning, you know, that Jesus is talking about is love. Love one another as he loved us. You know, I mean, love changes things. Love is a powerful thing. And when you truly love someone, you're going to touch their life. You're going to move them. And will it always make them convert and put their faith in Christ? Maybe not. But I really do think that love will soften their heart to maybe one day that God can draw them to repentance. And they will put their faith in Christ. Um, you know, a lot of people get mad um, at people that are trying to live righteous. And it's only because their own works are evil and they know it. They know that their brothers or their sisters or whoever is righteous and they get mad at them so I had someone tell me after they came back to Jesus that they used to get mad at me um, just because of how I believed in things and it was because they knew that they were wrong and they were in sin and yeah so yeah but I hope this encourages you to dig deeper into God's word I hope that you subscribe and hit that like button if you really enjoyed it it just helps us to reach more people with the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus and I'll hopefully get back to first John before a month ends <laughs> before another month so we can get this book down and maybe jump into a new one so yeah, I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. And remember, God loves you and he's always with you. God bless.